Hi guys! Today we're going to look at how we can add some simple collectibles to our game. We'll allow the player to collect the items on collision and we'll display the total collected in the UI. Ok, so we're going to start with this scene that has a character that can run around and jump. We've covered how to create this scene in the earlier videos of our 3D platformer series, so take a look if you want to know how it was done. Alternatively, you can get access to the project files of previous videos by supporting us on Patreon. A link to the relevant project files can be found in the description. The first thing we need is something to collect. For this, we'll head over to the Unity Asset Store at assetstore.unity.com. We'll search for Gems Set. We'll add this one to our assets and open it in Unity. We'll download and import the asset into the project. Next, we'll create a new parent object for our collectible. To do this, we'll click the plus button on the hierarchy and create a new empty game object. We'll call this Diamond. Then we'll go to the Assets panel and find the asset we just imported. We'll go to the Prefabs folder and find the Cyan Diamond. We'll drag this onto the diamond object in the hierarchy. Now we have a diamond in the scene, we're going to make a few changes to its transform. We want the diamond to always be slightly off the ground, so we'll set the Y position to 0.4. We'll also reduce the size by setting the scale to 0.5 on all axes. Now we have one diamond ready, but in our game we're going to want lots of diamonds. To help us do this, we're going to create a reusable asset known as a prefab. We'll navigate to the root folder in the assets panel. Then we'll click the plus button and create a new folder. We'll name this prefabs. Then we'll drag the diamond from the hierarchy into the new folder. This has now created a prefab of the diamond that we can use again and again. Let's delete the original diamond. Then we can drag the prefab into the scene to create as many diamonds as we want. We'll just scatter a few around for now. To tidy up the hierarchy, we'll create a parent object for all the diamonds. To do this, we'll click on the plus button and create a new empty game object. We'll call this Diamonds. We'll select all the diamonds in the hierarchy. Then we'll drag them all into the new parent object. Ok, let's press play to see how this is looking. We now have items for our character to collect, but at the moment he just passes through them. Let's stop the game and fix this. The first thing we need to be able to do is detect collisions with the diamonds. In order to do this we need to add a collider. We'll select one of the diamonds in the hierarchy. Then we'll click on Add Component and add a box collider. We'll set the Y position of the collider to 0.4. We'll also set the scale to 0.4 on all axes. This will create a box roughly the size of the diamond that we can detect collisions with. We don't want the diamond to actually block the movement of the character though. To allow us to detect collisions without the diamond becoming an obstacle, we'll tick the Is Trigger checkbox. So far, we've just made these changes to one diamond. Because we made it a prefab, it's easy to apply these changes to all of the diamonds. We can just click on the Overrides drop down in the Inspector and select Apply All. Now we have the collider set up, we need to create some scripts to handle the collection of items. We'll go to the Scripts folder and click the plus button. We'll create a new script and call it Player Inventory. This script will allow us to keep track of how many diamonds we've collected. We'll drag it onto the character in the hierarchy to assign it. Then we'll create another new script. We'll call this one Diamond. This will contain the logic for when the character collides with the diamond. We'll drag it onto one of the diamonds in the hierarchy. Then we'll click the Overrides drop down and apply to all. Next, we'll double click the Player Inventory script to open it in the editor. 
This will be a really simple script. We'll delete the start and update method. Then we'll create a new public integer property for the number of diamonds collected. We'll set this to have a private setter. This means that any other script can read the value, but only this script can set the value. We'll then create a new public method called diamond collected. In here, we'll increment the number of diamonds that have been collected. Next, we'll go to the diamond script. We'll remove the start and update methods again. In here, we want to detect the collisions between the diamond and the character. To do this, we'll use the onTriggerEnter method. This will be called whenever something collides with the diamond. The first thing we want to do is check that the collision is with the character. To do this, we'll try to get the player inventory component from the object that has been collided with. If the player inventory component isn't null, then we know that the collision is with the character. We can then use the player inventory component to call the diamond collected method. Finally, we'll set the diamond to inactive once it's been collected. So if the character has collided with the diamond, it will increment the number of diamonds in the inventory and then the diamond will be deactivated. Let's save this and switch back to Unity to try this out. Now we can collect the diamonds. To see how many diamonds we've collected, we'll click on the character in the hierarchy. Then we'll switch to the debug view in the inspector. We can now see the number of diamonds that have been collected. The final thing to do is make this visible to the player. Let's stop the game and switch back to the normal view in the inspector. We'll add a UI canvas by clicking the plus button in the hierarchy and selecting UI Canvas. We'll change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. And we'll set the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080. This will make sure any UI elements scale correctly on different screen sizes. So if the actual resolution is smaller or bigger than the reference resolution, the elements will increase or decrease in size accordingly. We'll switch to the game view so we can see our UI elements. Next, we'll click the plus button in the hierarchy and then select UI Text Text Mesh Pro. When prompted, we'll import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. We'll name this Diamond Text. Then we'll make some changes to the position and formatting of the text. We'll click on the Anchor button. We'll hold down Shift and Alt and then click on the top left button. This will anchor the text to the top left of the screen. Then we'll set the X position to 130 and the Y position to minus 40. We'll set the font to bold and the font size to 50. And we'll set the initial text to zero. Now we have some text to display the number of diamonds. Next, we want to add an image alongside to show what it refers to. We'll click the plus button in the hierarchy and select UI Image. We'll name this Diamond Image. Then we'll click on the Anchor button. We'll hold down Shift and Alt and then click on the top left button. We'll set the X position to 20 and the Y position to minus 20. Now we just need an image of a diamond. We'll create a new folder in the root of our assets called Sprites. Then we'll open this folder and right click and select Import New Asset. We'll import a diamond image that we've created. A link to this image can be found in the description if you want to use the same one. We just need to make sure the texture type is set to Sprite. We'll click Apply. Then we'll set the image source to this sprite.
Now we need to add a script to update the UI as diamonds are collected. We'll add a new script to the scripts folder. We'll call this inventory UI. Then we'll drag this script onto the text in the hierarchy. Let's double click the script to open it in the editor. First of all, we'll add the TM Pro namespace. We'll add a private field for the diamond text. Then in the start method, we'll get the text component and assign it to this field. We'll delete the update method as we won't need this. Next, we'll create a public method to update the diamond text. We'll take the player inventory as a parameter. Then we'll set the text to the number of diamonds in the inventory. Next, we need to call this method whenever a diamond is collected. There are a few ways we could do this, but we're going to use Unity Events. We can trigger a Unity event when something happens, in this case when a diamond's collected. Then we can set up subscribers to this event in the inspector to do whatever we want when a diamond's collected. We'll switch to the player inventory script. In here, we'll add a namespace for Unity Engine Events. Then we'll create a public Unity event. We'll specify that the event will take an argument of type player inventory. We'll call this on diamond collected. Then in the diamond collected method, we'll invoke the event. We'll pass through this to pass the player inventory through to the subscribers. Let's save the script and switch back to Unity. Now we need to wire up the event. We'll select the character in the hierarchy. Then we'll click the plus button to add a subscriber to the on diamond collected event. We'll drag the diamond text in. Now we can select the update diamond text method. So whenever a diamond's collected, the event will fire and it'll call the update diamond text method on the inventory UI script. Let's press play to try this out. Now, when we collect diamonds, the UI will update to show how many have been collected. Finally, let's stop the game and add lots more diamonds all over the scene. Now we have lots to collect. OK, that covers everything for this video. A big thank you to all our amazing patrons for helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments and subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, guys.